Okay, so we're back the next day after that socket set up. So it turned out pretty good. I'll take my weight out here to show you. So there's basically the end result of that socket in the fuse. So I went ahead and sanded that down a little bit just so the the edges inside there, you know, aren't so sharp. Take a bit of sandpaper and just just run it over a bit so just so if you're reaching in there with your hand and whatnot, you don't get scratched up. You can see inside the edge of the socket, you can maybe see the there's a bit of micro balloons kind of in the gap up on the top there. You could sand all that stuff smooth a little bit too if you wanted. I didn't bother. For our fit, I've cleaned up the tube, taken the PVF it with just some water and a rag, and you'll see it, it fits nice and, nice and snug in there. No slop at all. So that's kind of what we wanted. So we're going to finish the wings off um, a bit. We're going to put some donuts inside these, these bolt holes, and I'm going to open up the servo lead hole and just clean up the servo lead hole on the wing. Um, first, I'm going to check the fit, just out of curiosity, just to see if there's any any real gap in there. Slide the wing on. Again, these bolts are nice and snug in here. So you can see that fits pretty good. You know, there's maybe a slight bit of gap in the front here and maybe a little bit to the back here. But, like I said, I'm going to put that, some of this uh, that gray wing foam. That's this stuff here, you see it in a lot of the Japanese uh, models. <clears throat> I'm going to put that on the root of the stab and the wing. So that's going to make up some of those gaps anyways. Once we, once you put the wing on, you tighten the, tighten the hold down bolts on, it'll, it'll fill in that. Fill in that gap. You can get that tape out of Japan from Morris Hobbies. Uh, he's pretty good about shipping anywhere in the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and do up the donuts and whatnot. I've already pre-made them again, same sort of process as the other donuts we made, just holes and a and a piece of light ply. Um, you're gonna drill that for the size of the thread, not that that bottom recess. So. They are going to fit, you know, through the thread neatly. Again, I don't have my wing adjusters, so we'll do those later. And I'll probably, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the, the holes in the fuse just a little bit, just so I have just a hair of play, so I can make sure the incidence at the trailing edge on both wings is exactly the same when I set these in place. So I've pre-cut these, but, you know, they're not all exactly perfectly in the same diameter. So just to really clean them up and make them super nice, I'm going to show you a trick on a on the uh, on the drill press. Okay, so I'm using my drill press as a kind of like almost a milling machine. Um, what it is, I took my donuts and I stuck them on the bolt wing bolt, and I clamped down. Now there's a spare one in the kit, so that's what I used. Um, you could use any bolt, I guess, as long as it fits the right diameter. So you could actually do these. If you have a specific size of bolt, drill a hole out for that size of bolt. Do this process, then drill it out for the for the metric six uh, wing hole down bolt. We're gonna put this up in here, fairly tight in the check. I got my drill press set to max speed. And then what I'm gonna do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sanding, just one of my T sanding blocks on that thing just to flush it out all the way around. So there, there's your uh, donuts all perfectly round basically to that hole. You know, it's maybe not as good as a lathe, but uh, it's the next best thing. Okay, so we're going to get ready to glue these in. So I went ahead before 
And I've opened these holes up a little bit, so you'll see there's a little bit of play now in that uh, in that hole. And to do that, I just used a just a round file like that. Just open them up, just enough. We get a little bit of movement in there. Really, it's going to be the donut at the end of the day that really fixes the position of that. So I'm going to use some of this rubber toughened black CA. Really just so the black matches the black of the carbon fiber. Um, I've not gone and bothered to laminate these with carbon to make it look cool or anything. I'm doing the build basically out of basic materials that I've got around. Um, you, don't need, you don't need to do it fancy. If you want, you can spray paint a black or something like that if you want to match the, match the inside of the fuse. So we'll go ahead, we'll put the, put the wing on. So really I got a little bit of movement, not very much, even with that bit of play in there. So I'm just going to take a bit of the black TA, just put it on the, put it more on the outer edge. Because <clears throat> it will squish when you put the nut on. And you don't really want it to squish into the bolt. Double check that the center is where you want it, and then do the same to the back, the back one. There, so you can hit those with a bit of kicker. So I'll set that glue up. And that's it for your donuts. Now I did sand the fuse before I did that, so roughen it up a little bit around those around those holes just to uh, to make sure you get a good bond. So now that I've got that kind of bolted on there tight, I'm going to show you that gap and uh, it's really good as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the other wing and then we'll get to the servo leads. Okay so we've got, i got the donuts in on both sides. Um, before I take the second wing off here, I'm just going to mark, basically take my saw and pick a thread. I'm going to leave a little bit of space uh, inside that thumb screw. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically come out, you know, a few threads. And then I'm just going just gonna to cut into that. I'm just going to cut into this first bolt here. So I'm going to use that now, <clears throat> that same distance, and I'm going to cut all the, all the rest of them the same, like that. Okay, so I went ahead and I've cut all the wing hold down bolts short, so they all kind of look like that now. Both sides, so that'll make it a lot easier. Thread those on and off, or a lot easier, but save time. Don't put that wing back on. Uh, give those give those uh, donuts time to set up. Um, even though you use kicker, the glue kind of on the inside, you know, it takes a little while to set. So for the servo hole, I'm, I went ahead and used my uh, circle template, and I picked the five eight inch hole. Give it lots of room, and I'm just gonna basically where the where where we marked that hole earlier. I'm just gonna open that one up now to that five eight inch using. Uh, my same structured carbide cutter and then follow that up with a small sanding drum just to clean up clean up the size. So there's basically our servo lead hole so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then in the wing you'll can see there once it focuses in that hole in the root ribs not quite where the hole in the in the foam is so I'm going to go ahead and make this hole bigger as well. Same sort of process, just grind that out. Um, we sh could have or maybe should have done this before we put the rib on. I didn't really notice until after it was on. Um, but that's okay, we can do it. You can do it after the fact as well. No big deal. Okay, so I went ahead and finished up both the servo lead holes. So the fuse is done. 
and I tighten up the wing. Same process, 5 8 inch hole. I just open it up around where that lead goes down into the into the servo bay there. So now everything's gonna line up reasonably well when we go to put the servo lead in. That effectively finishes up um, all of that wing mounting work on the fuse uh, and some tidy up work around that. And we're really start ready, we're ready to start uh, doing the capping on all this stuff. So on the rudder, first things first, there is an arrow on it. So you know which way is, is to the front. Um, very important. It is pretty thick on both both sides. I mean, the wider end is is the leading edge, and on this particular airplane, it is it is uh, angled at the top to match sort of the the shape of the fuselage coming over. So you you can kind of figure it out that way. But just from a just from a standpoint of the of the foam chucks, it's important to know that's the direction. There are these lines, but once you cap them, they'll cover, be covered up. You do want to keep that right because we are going to use this this foam. Um, I'm going to put hard points, drill hard points into the rudder for the controller horn. Um, so you want to use this foam to square it up to your drill press when you drill those holes. So if you get these confused as to which direction things are, uh, you may have a bit of a challenge uh, figuring out which is the right one down the road. So it's good to mark them. He only's got the one side marked. I'm going to mark both sides just so I know which way they go. Doesn't really matter <clears throat> which way around you would drill it, whether you use this side or this side. Um, just the fact that you get the orientation correct. Okay, so we're going to put the top and bottom cap on the on the rudder here, and we're going to haul them out. Um, so you'll notice they are not the same. Um, so this is almost 40 millimeters tall by 35 wide. So you want the tall way with the height of the of the rudder. You do not want it the short way, or it won't it won't fit. And the same with the top. It's slightly slightly wider, 30 versus that's uh, pretty close to square, maybe 28. It's fairly close, so it maybe it doesn't matter quite as much, but definitely for the bottom one, you want it. Uh, you want to make sure it's the tall way with the rudder. So we'll start with the bottom one, just to figure out um, where we're going to router out. Now, when we're doing this, you don't want to glue it like this, because you can imagine when you try to put the leading edge on, you know, you could potentially end up with a gap like that. So you, you got to make sure you got enough material that when you trim that off, it's it's gonna be flush there. So really you can put that because of that angle there going down you can put the back of this pretty much flush with the with the trailing edge and then you don't have as much to sand and the front you can you can essentially leave overhanging like that and then we can we'll cut that off after the fact. Let's we'll mark a line on there and trim that off. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark off sort of the left and right position on here. I see those pencil marks. So that's going to be. So I'm going to rotor inside that. So I'm going to. I'm going to make a mark in there. Maybe about another five millimeters or so. So there's the marks. We're going to rotor out the inner side. We can rotor all the way through on both ends. Doesn't matter. The leading edge uh, and trailing edge are long enough, so they will cover up cover up that hole. So just so we don't take off too much, I'm going to actually draw the shape of the fuselage, use the bottom of the fuse as a guide, and I'm going to kind of draw that that curve where we're going to sand down to, and then I'm going to make sure that the square we cut in here only goes so deep. Okay, so I've done that. So that's basically the, the shape of the fuselage roughly. You know, i kind of drawn out a square about, that's basically what I'm going to cut out. I'm going to make it about 20 millimeters deep and then follow that taper. So to do that I'm going to use Dremel with a depth gauge on it. So you thread that on there and then you can just adjust your depth. So I'm just going to set that to 20 millimeters um, and then basically router that out. 
Okay, so I finished up lightening these up. I mean, they're not super pretty, but you get the idea. I took a big chunk of material out of the bottom one, and I did take a chunk of material out of the top one. Uh, no real idea how much weight I took out, but I did anyways. Any weight you can take out of the back of a plane, the better. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna glue these on to the rudder and tape them up and we'll get ready. We'll leave them set up overnight and then finish them off and put the leading and trailing edges on tomorrow. So again, polyurethane, just a little bit here on each side. Um, I'm not gonna use any water just because I find for doing, for doing uh, capping, it expands enough on its own with just the humidity in the air. So, top cap done, bottom cap done, runners top and bottom are ready to go, so we'll let that sit up overnight. And we'll finish those up tomorrow and finish the trailing and leading edges as well, and that'll basically wrap up, wrap up the rudder. Okay, so I've pulled the tape off of our rudder. Um, you can see the top capping nicely glued. You know, this polyurethane, so it does have that expansion you know it's expanded a little bit around there around the edges there um, when we go to sand that that'll that'll disappear so <clears throat> how do we shape that you know there's a lot of dust when you're doing this work so I'd like to do as little as sanding as I possibly can get away with so this is an old master air screw razor plane uh, there's lots of different ones of these you can get um, at the hobby store and then you know a razor saw, this is a Zona one, but any kind of hobby saw will work. So, <clears throat> so again, I'm just going to cut the top off a bit. That one's pretty close, I'll sand it. I'll cut this one off first, and I'll face those up with, this, with the sanding block. Just to get my little sanding, sticky back sanding block. So I'll face those off first, and then we'll work on doing this this side. So those are done, front and back. So I'm gonna go ahead and plane these these guys down now, get them close, and then we'll finish sanding that up. You know, you want to get up pretty pretty close, so just minimize the amount of sanding you have to do. So we got all the sides roughed out. You know, it might look a bit tapered like that. It's okay. The sandpaper will rip through that pretty quick. So we're going to go ahead and sand those flush. Now on my paper here, I'm using 120 grit. Um, I don't mind being too aggressive for this kind of rough shape work. It does go a lot faster. If you're trying to use like two, 220 or 320, it takes forever. <clears throat> so I use the rougher stuff first. Try not to rip through the sheeting too much. So the rough stuff, just take it down. I won't get it, you know, it might not be exactly perfect at this stage. Um, we'll get, we'll do a lot more sanding on it later. So there's the first side done, much smoother, pretty flat. You know, most of that polyurethane's gone at this point. You don't want to put a lot of weight on the sanding block, you just let the sandpaper do the work. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all this off, off camera, and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. Okay, so really just a few minutes work, um, but there's all of our end caps sanded reasonably flush. There's still a little bit of a line you can feel but we're gonna do a lot more finish sanding on these parts yet so we're really now to start ready to start joining the leading edge and trailing edge capping on the rudder so I'll set that up and show you what that looks like okay so I got the leading edge capping here the trailing edge capping which is like about a sixteenth I'm sure it's metric but and I got the tail post so because the trailing edge capping is so thin, um, you know, if you were to tape something that thin, it would be easy to sort of deform it, like like bend it around, and that wouldn't keep the trailing edge very straight. So, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use the tail post actually just to 
hold that in place and then I'm going to tape tape over top of the tail post instead of using the instead of just going straight on the capping part also in the kit if you line up the bottom of that trailing edge sheeting um, it is slightly short just a little bit so I've checked over all the height of the rudder <clears throat> and over all the way it is here it's slightly it is a bit taller maybe that much than the fuse at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and line it up flush with the bottom and leave a bit of a gap at the top I'm sure this will come out if not we can always fill it a little bit afterwards so I'm gonna go ahead and put that glue on the same way we did previously and tape it all up and I'll show you when I'm done okay so I got all that tape on there that's what it looks like so you can see the trailing edge there is underneath the tail post and the leading edge is on taped up so we're gonna leave this sit up and cure and then we can trim it all off the face is just like we did the top and bottom caps and that will pretty much rough out the rudder okay so we got the leading edge and trailing edge capping on we're gonna go ahead and shape those down to size same process um, planer and sandpaper and then these probably saw those off and just clean them up so there's our rudder uh, it's basically rough sanded ready to go you can see get a flavor for the joints the polyurethane makes pretty good joints once you sand them down you do occasionally it does ball up and you'll end up with some marks like that so you'll have to fill those um, <clears throat> not really a big deal but it does it does happen and sometimes even with your planer you'll catch the wood so not too bad I usually don't bother uh, fill in all that stuff at this stage. I mean, we're going to sand this a lot more. <clears throat> Sometimes, even if you just spritz a little water on it, the wood will expand and you can take those out as well. So, just want to set this up here, give you an idea of the rudder fit. So, that's you know, there's a there's a flat spot in the bottom here for the tail wheel. So, if we put that flush or close to flush with that, you know, we end up with a bit of overlap at the top. So. We'll use that to kind of shape that rudder into place because since the fuse is coming up and it's just starting to curve over, we'll shape that. And it does fit pretty good on width. You know, it's about the exact right width through that section. So we're pretty close. So it shouldn't be a whole lot of work to finish shaping that rudder. Um, we will install the tail post before we do any more work on the rudder. Uh, and the last thing we have to do in the fuse before we do that is just get our servo cable uh, tube to the back center. Just easier to do that now before we get everything closed up. The tail servo cable tube. So I don't have one, so I'm going to make one. So I'm going to take a steel bar, whatever you have handy, and pages from my kids' Lego magazine. I don't think they'll miss it. And I'm going to cut it into strips like so. And then I'm just going to start basically wrapping those, you know, on the angle. You can kind of figure it out, but I'm going to wrap those down around the, around the bar here. Kind of start fairly tight. You shouldn't have to hold it together in any way, shape, or form. There, that should be pretty close. It's going to go down about there. Yeah, that's up to about there. Okay, so that's just held on there. Now, we don't want to try to take that off, obviously, or else it's going to splay all over the place. So, I'm going to take some packing tape, and I'm basically just going to, along the length of it, <clears throat> a few different sections here, tape this up. I'm just going to do that and I'm going to carefully kind of wrap it around trying to not make too big of a mess out of it. And this really is just going to fix all those, that paper in place. Ok, 
it's pretty much got it. Um, you know, if you get some tape clinging on the end here, just rip it off with a knife. We can actually cut these straight now. So really, we got that on there. We just need to very carefully pull that tube out. And we have ourselves a nice paper servo tube. So I'm sure somebody's curious, well, what does that weigh? Well, six grams, that's what that weighs. So pretty light, costs nothing, save for some tape and 10 minutes of your time. And so we'll put that down into the center of the fuselage there and we'll attach to the side and we've got ourselves our, our servo tube. Um, my tube's a little bit bigger than the hole, so if that happens, I just cut a cut a line in there, kind of cross it over a bit, and then just put some tape just to make that end a bit tapered so it'll fit into your hole. Um, or you could really double check before you did it and make your hole the right size to start with. But at any rate, that's that's what I have to do to get mine in there. So you can see my tube in there. So I'm just going to go and put some clear silicone on both ends of the tube, one where it goes through the former and one at this end, and just lay it on its side, uh, put some tape over it, and let that sit there, sit there overnight. There we go, that's what it looks like from the tailpost side. Nice and in the center there. And we can get all the way in the fuse here. Add a couple two points of tape on there and just I just silicone it at this end. So that's what that looks like. So nice lightweight servo cable.